Welcome to Murphy Bed Depot's Majestic Library Bed Instruction Video. As you unpack your pallet, make sure to inspect each part and re-inspect once you've unwrapped each pair to make sure there's no damage. If there is any damage, be sure to give us a call and send us an email right away. All of your hardware will be inside the boxes along with the written instructions. When it comes to reading the labels and identifying the parts, it can be a little bit tricky, but if you follow the written instructions, you should be able to separate each cabinet so that you can prepare to assemble your Majestic Library Bed. The list of tools is in the written instructions as well. Make sure to gather all of those. The secret to unwrapping the shrink-wrapped pairs is to slide a screwdriver along the sharp edge, and it'll cut that shrink wrap right off for you. Here we jump ahead to step three. Preparing the bed cabinet for assembly. You want to get your driver ready and put those pins in. The pins you received may not have the red surround on them. And then moving on to step four, you want to attach the valance for a queen size or valances for a twin or double size to the top. Make sure the cams on the valance are facing the back unfinished edge of the top. We'll put that onto either your left or right end for the bed cabinet and stand it up, hold it secure, and tighten the cams that attach both the valance or valances and the top to that right or left end. After that, you'll proceed and do the same with the front toe and the headboard, which are getting cams in them right there. Be careful when lowering these on so that you don't damage the end of your part. It is nice to have a helper, helper for this step if needed. And when you tighten those cams, make sure they're secure. You should go just past 180 degrees to make sure they are fully locked in place. You may require a little bit of effort with a number three Phillips screwdriver. As outlined in step six, you'll then Attach the other end of the bed cabinet by lowering it on top of those parts very carefully and tightening the same cams on the opposite end of those parts, the top, the valance or valances, the headboard, and the front toe. This is definitely best done with a helper, as you see in the video. After that, you'll get your library top and put the pins on the left and right end. It may have holes along the back edge. Those are not for pins. And slide that onto the top of your bed cabinet. Reach inside the bed cabinet and tighten the six to eight cams that will hold that in place. And you now have a double layer top with an overhang. After you've got those cams tightened, you wanna reinforce that sandwich of the top and library top with several inch and a quarter screws. And for this, you'll need a square drive bit and an impact driver works best. Very carefully lay that onto its face. I would add some padding under the corners before you lay it on its face and then lift it up to the wall with a helper. At that point, you'll be ready to move on to either hanging the lights over the headboard or proceeding to prepare your side cabinets for assembly. The side cabinets follow essentially the same process as the bed cabinet. They will have additional holes for adjustable shelves that are the same size as pinholes, but do not get pins in them. They're typically in groups of five. And as well, you'll have holes for the hinge plates if you do have doors on those outer cabinets. Those do not get pins either. The hinge plate holes are in sets of two just above the deck and under the horizontal partition. Once you've got all your pins and cams in place, you will want to attach those hinge plates. On the outer cabinets, they are the thicker hinge plates. Be careful when doing this. Hold it very secure front and back with thumb and forefinger or it will spin on you and cause some scratching to both the board and your fingers. Make sure those are nice and tight against the board though. You don't want them loose at all or else your doors will wobble. Once you've got one end prepared, 
you will attach the valance to the top and the front toe to the deck. Lower those in place. Again, tighten the cams. There should be at least three attaching the deck and toe kick. Two attaching the horizontal partition. And at least three attaching the top and valance at the top end of your side cabinet. It always helps to go back and make sure you didn't miss any cams. And then with a helper, lower the other end on top of all those parts and tighten the cams again on that end to make sure that piece is fully secure. Then once again, you'll proceed to the library top. The same procedure as the bed cabinet. Be very careful to make sure that you have the library top marked as assembly number one for the left cabinet and the library top marked as assembly number three for the right cabinet so that the pinholes for the outer side valance will be facing outward once you stand that cabinet up. You'll reinforce that again with inch and a quarter screws, just being careful not to go through the part that overhangs the top. Then once again, you're ready to stand up a cabinet. At this point, you simply repeat that process for the other side, and you stand that one up on the other side of your bed cabinet. Here you see them standing up the left cabinet, sliding it into place, and then you're ready to secure those three cabinets together to become one large unit. So make sure you have it at the spot on the wall that you're gonna want it to stay. You clamp the verticals together, top and bottom, with some quick clamps. You can use a rubber mallet to get those faces as flush as possible, top and bottom. Once you secure the top, you'll be able to move the bottom a little bit to get to re-flush those pieces, or vice versa. You'll use six screws per side, two at the bottom, two at the top, and two in the middle. We secure from inside the bed cabinet at the bottom, from behind the valance on the side cabinet at the top, and under the horizontal partition about a third of the way up the cabinet. That way those screws are pretty well hidden. At this point, you can secure the steel tube to the top of the bed cabinet, and it should overhang the side cabinets a little bit. The bolts will go in from the bottom with the nuts on top. Then you're ready to secure your cabinets to the studs. Make sure that you find the studs, or if it is not a stud wall, that you secure to the framing of the wall, whatever that may be. You'll need other fasteners if it is not a wood stud wall. After this, you can hang one side of your library track. Make some spacers out of a paint stick or something along those lines and tape it in place exactly two inches long so that your track is exactly two inches away from the front edge of the tops. You can use an adjustable shelf to clamp that in place, just as you see here. And you'll use the screws included in the BC2 sliding bookcase hardware box to put that in place. The end of each track should be right about in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfectly exact, but pretty close to the middle works best. And if there's a hole that lines up with the seam between the side cabinet and the bed cabinet, you don't need to put a screw in there. There are plenty of other screws that will hold it securely so that your sliding bookcases can hang from that track. Then you'll be able to put a stopper on the outside end of the track that you hung. So on the far right, if you hung the right side track. And then you can begin the assembly of your sliding or rolling bookcases. Again, it's essentially the same process as the three cabinets you've assembled, adding a back and rollers on the tops, which should have been drilled through in step one if necessary. If your sliding bookcases do have doors on them, you wanna use the thinner 
hinge plates on there. And follow the same procedure as you did with the outer fixed bookcases as you assemble this. One important detail is that when you put the back onto the sliding bookcases, make sure that the pair of pilot holes on the back edge are in line with the horizontal partition. It is possible to put it on upside down. Make sure you don't do that. When you put the other end of that sliding bookcase on, you'll need to use a stubby screwdriver to tighten the cams on the valance and the toe kick. You'll reinforce this which, with inch and three quarter screws through the back into the deck, top, and horizontal partition. This is very important that you do not skip this step as it adds the strength required for these bookcases to hang and support whatever you're going to put on them. Additionally, you will add L brackets just inside the roller post holes and use three quarter inch screws to secure those in place nice and tight. Again, this is a very important step to reinforce these bookcases. You then put the roller posts through the hole and secure them from below with the plates, simply screwing those in place. The new rollers that we have are easily adjustable from below once assembled, so you don't have to worry too much about them being screwed in the same amount. Just make sure they are at least all the way through the steel plate that they're screwed into. Not too much beyond that. And you're just about ready to start hanging a bookcase. One last step is to install the small plastic rollers that go near the bottom edge. You want those centered three and a half inches from the bottom of that bookcase, screwed in to the vertical on the left and right side of the bookcase. For the next step, you definitely want a helper and a ladder. You stand up that bookcase just to the left of the track if you installed the right track first. Lift from inside and pull it along as your helper lifts from the outside. Slide that all the way over to the end and then make sure you add two rubber stoppers with the rubber on the first one facing that roller and the rubber on the other one facing the other way. You don't want to forget that or you'll have to take your bookcases back off. You repeat that entire process for the other sliding bookcase. Hang it on that track as well and push it all the way over so that you can install the other side of your aluminum track. You may want to add the rubber stopper to that before you hang it, especially if the other end of your library bed is close to the wall. Again, clamp it in place and secure it with the provided Phillips head screws. Make sure you wear safety goggles as you do this, as there will be some sawdust. It does help to clamp them together in the middle where they meet with a pair of vice grips, just as you see there. Once you have your sliding bookcases both hung and both sides of the track fully secured, you can adjust the placement of the rubber stoppers so that the sliding bookcases stop just before they're flush with the left and right ends of the bed and side cabinet assembly, and so that they meet right in the middle. I usually put the rubber stoppers in the middle so that there's a little bit of play left and right, but that as you slide them, they don't go too far past center. The easiest way to adjust them is to move them past where you want and use the sliding bookcase to bump them in place. The left side of the left sliding bookcase and the right side of the right sliding bookcase should end up pretty close to parallel with the verticals of the bed cabinet. Adjusting the bookcases is now much easier. From below, those roller posts should have a slot in them, and you can adjust the angle of the bookcases by simply turning those posts with a flathead screwdriver. After this, you will add the valances that wrap around the entire assembly. These use pins and cams to attach. 
and you want the side that is longer in regards to where the pins are placed down. You attach the left outer and the right outer first and then the left front and right front to those and the front edge of the library top. And then you'll be able to proceed to the valance and nailer for the bed cabinet itself. These two parts are stacked on top of one another and then the valance is centered on the nailer and screwed down into place. It's a heavy piece when those two things are screwed together so make sure that as you get up on your ladder to secure those to the front edge of the library top that you're very careful and you may want to help her to hand it to you even. The purpose of this piece is to be that front outer valance and the reason it is two layers is because the part called the nailer, the longer piece, will overlap the seams between the outer front valances and the center front valance so that you have a nice complete and finished look. After you've got the pins in place on this part you get up on your ladder and secure it to the front edge of the library top on the bed cabinet. Make sure those cams are tightened and then we reinforce it with a couple more inch and a quarter screws. The placement of these screws is important. You want them to go through the outer front valance of each side cabinet into the rear of the nailer. To achieve the most seamless look, you add a clamp top to bottom so that the bottom edge of those, the valance and the nailer are flush. And then you add another clamp front to back so that as you screw in, they don't separate from one another. You'll have to go in at a little bit of an angle. You're now ready to start adding your adjustable shelves. You should have, have, have received enough adjustable shelf pins for all of your 12 adjustable shelves. You put those all in place, slide the adjustable shelves in, which usually works best by coming in at an angle and then lowering them into place on the adjustable shelf pins. If you have doors on the outer fixed bookcases, the adjustable shelves behind those doors won't be as deep as the others. Now to install your doors, you hammer the hinges onto the doors. For the outer fixed bookcases, you, you want to use the hinges that are curved. Those are inset hinges, and they are the smaller doors if you also have doors on your sliding bookcases. Now we move on to assembling your steel bed frame. You want to follow the written instructions very closely. You assemble the left and right floor yoke just by hand at first. Hand tighten those on to the bottom spring bar, the angle braces, and the yoke connector bar. And then secure them with a half inch wrench and socket. When you assemble the bed frame, again, I would recommend hand tightening the bolts all the way around for the weldment, the stiffeners, and the foot before securing them all in place. It does help to measure diagonally, corner to corner, to get the frame as square as possible before you start tightening those bolts with a wrench. All of the bolts will come in through the bottom if you have the frame laid upside down as we instruct, and the nut will be on top as you assemble them. This video is fast forward a little bit because there is a bit of repetition in this section. If you have any questions, try reading the step again. The video is a help to go along with the written instructions, but some of these steps are better expressed in words. And if you still have questions and can't quite figure it out, you're welcome to give us a call or shoot us an email and we'll be glad to help. One very important step when assembling the steel bed frame is to make sure that the left leg is on the left and that the right leg is on the right. Be sure to look closely at the written instructions for this step and look at the diagrams and the arrows to make sure those offset holes are on the correct side. If when you lower the bed frame to the ground after assembling it and standing it up, the legs 
are not perpendicular to the floor. This means that you have the left leg on the right and the right leg on the left. The good news is at that point you don't have to disassemble the whole frame but you can simply swap the left and right leg. The stiffeners go into the holes that are larger in diameter and closer to the inside edge of the left and right side rail. And here we come to the step to attach the legs. Make sure that nylon spacer is between each leg and the side rail. And make sure that nylon washer is between the actuator arm and the leg. When the leg is folded down, the bottom offset hole will be closer to you. It will be facing away from the mattress support. The actuator arm goes between the leg and the side rail, and that's the purpose of the nylon spacer on the top hole of the legs. You're now ready to attach the feet and the leg connector bar. Be careful when holding that foot if using a wrench so that you don't burn your hand. Flip the frame over and you're ready to attach the mattress arms. In this video you see him attaching the mattress bar, mattress retainer bar as well. But all of our library beds now include a tilting headboard. So that flat bar that you see in the video right here will be left off and a board will be attached to those mattress arms instead. To secure your frame inside the cabinet, you'll pull the floor yokes all the way up against the rear of the front toe, and then bolt your wall mount brackets to the outside of the left and right floor yoke. The bolt head should be on the outside of the wall mount brackets, and the nut should be on the inside of the left and right floor yokes. And there should be a washer inside and a washer outside. Center the frame in the cabinet and then secure it to the wall. What you're securing to in a wood framed wall is the bottom plate, which is a 2x4 or 2x6 that runs underneath the studs horizontally. To go into that bottom plate, you may need to angle those screws downward somewhat. With a helper, you lift the frame up at an angle so that you don't hit that valance up top and place the knobs on the left and right rails into the hooks on the floor yokes. You're then ready to add some springs. You hook the bottom hook into the bottom spring bar, get some vice grips that are at least 8 inches long, if not 10 inches long, secure them just to the back edge of the top hook, and then use the yoke connector bar as leverage to stretch the spring and slide it into the hole. This is often more easily done by lifting off to the side of the hole and then rotating into place. We do have a separate video on this on our website as well. You then attach the actuator arm to the floor yokes, making sure that that nylon washer is between the actuator arm and the floor yoke and secure that into place. This helps hold the frame onto the floor yokes and that bar will extend the legs as you bring the frame down and collapse the legs as you raise the frame up. You only need a couple springs at this point because you don't have a lot of weight on the frame. The mattress support will begin adding weight. One portion of your mattress support has an indentation. That goes at the head and you want to make sure the head of that part is resting against those bolt heads not on top of them. Secure the headpiece centered on the frame with two screws. Then lower the other square section, the center section, onto the frame. Secure it with two screws as well. and then proceed with the foot section, which has two corners that have a rounded edge or a notched edge on them. It's best to put the staples facing down so that your mattress doesn't rub on the staples on the bottom of the mattress supports. 
As you secure the footmost screws of the mattress support, you want to hold the strap between the frame and the mattress support centered on that hole and put the screw through the frame, through the strap, into the mattress support. This will hold the strap in place securely. You're then ready to place your mattress on. And if you have a tilting headboard, you'll proceed to that step as well. We're working on a video for the tilting headboard now. You want to add more springs because at this point the frame will be heavy and heavier than the number of springs that you should have added earlier on, which is just a couple. To get the right balance, you simply add one spring on the left and one spring on the right, test out the frame, add another pair of springs, test out the frame, until you get just the right balance so that it lowers and lifts with the minimum amount of effort. Congratulations! You've assembled a majestic library bed at this point. It's time to take a break, maybe take a nap. We always welcome feedback, so if you have any on this assembly process, we'd love to hear from you.